Nanakachan! Hi, welcome back to the channel. My name is Lace, and this is a Princess Connect video. You guys already know what it is. We're going to be talking about the upcoming update. Probably, I think, the biggest update of the year so far. I might have said that in one other video, but this one is really it. This one is going to be the biggest update of the year. And so I'm going to stop talking about it and start talking about it. And we're going to kick things off with a Nanika. It's going to be the Princess Gala. It's going to be the double three-star draw rates. She is a fantastic, fantastic unit. You know what? Let's just jump into her evaluation now. Very quickly, the TLDR for Nanika is that she is essentially meta from now until forever. JP, she is still being used every freaking day. So let's have a look at her skills to see as to why. Starting off with her Union Burst Mirror Mirror. She summons a clone with identical stats and action patterns as herself. She also creates a TP gain rate and large magic attack buff field. That TP gain rate field and the magic attack buff field should already be like, oh my freaking god. But on top of that, she also makes a clone of herself. And my guys, if you make clones of yourself, if you are able to summon something, it means that it can take damage, it means that it can die to feed TP, it means that it can take hits and die and do a mix of these things. <laughs> and this TP gain rate is going to be plus 15. That's 15% 15 extra TP from everything you friggin' do. And as for her skill one, we are going to see a satellite ray where she deals moderate magical damage to all enemies within the radius in the front line and then also stuns them as well for 0.5 seconds. Like, like, she is going to be cancelling a lot of skills in PvP. She is going to just be really, really freaking annoying altogether. PvE, definitely 100% a lot of utility, just not so much on the bosses themselves. And then moving on to her skill 2, we have Instance Gem, where she does a defense down. My guys, defense down, we've got TP gain rate field, we've got large magic attack, we got freaking summoning herself so that she can feed herself into like a CB boss and therefore the boss is going to UB, that UB is going to make your team take damage and then your damage is going to make your TP bars go up. It's gonna make you loop. It's gonna make you loop really, really hard. And so my guys, to top it off, we also have the EX skill giving herself magic attack. But if that wasn't cracked out enough, look at this moveset pattern. We've got a two into a one, and then we've got an auto, one, auto, two, one, auto, auto, one, two, auto, one. Like that skill uptime is insane. She's gonna be throwing out spells like a rigging Lord Magician. And so yes, with this evaluation, you guys already can see it, right? She is going to be used essentially everywhere. She has utility everywhere like you want to really be using this TP gain rate you like there is not a single game mode where TP gain rate for the entire team is bad like you got your summer Saren you've got your V Shizuru you've got all of these TP juices you got all of these support units the supports are usually the strongest and the most long-lasting because there is very unlikely chance that they are going to get replaced they are the kings at what they do and so TLDR should you roll for Miss Nenika yes 100% and remember that her banner is only on for three days in which the first day i believe we are going to be getting free 10 rolls on so if we're on the Ilya diabolos banner do not roll on that on the last day like if it's the august the fourth wait for the banner to change over and then roll on the nanika banner and as always my guys we are going to be doing the pool streams i will see you guys on august 4th 11 p.m and so immediately after the nanika banner we have the transfer student oh it's just student student are we and oh we got chieru we got uni we got chloe okay this is gonna be a good time you know it's gonna be a fantastic time and let me talk quickly about student Awi as well so here we've got TS Awi transfer student Awi student Awi I'm sorry uh, <laughs> starting off with the union burst venom blast in which she inflicts a large physical damage and a poison debuff to one enemy in the front large physical defense debuff Woo! My guys, that's what I'm talking about. This large physical defense debuff, it is Makoto level. It is freaking cracked out. Moving on to the skill one, we have Spike Circle. And so Spike Circle deploys a field around one enemy in the front that inflicts physical damage over time to all enemies within the field. However, any enemies with poison slash toxic debuff already receives extra damage. So if you guys are familiar with the base Aoi and her unique equipment, this is pretty, pretty similar. And then moving through to the skill two, we've got medium physical defense debuff. Oh! Oh. So one enemy in front, medium physical damage to the target if they also have poison slash toxic debuff. Now, this is good because the conditional is for the poison slash toxic, like the physical damage. However, the medium defense down, it's always going to be there. So it is reliable. After that, we've got the standard EX skill for physical attack up. We've got the physical attack bonds and then two, one initial attack pattern into auto, auto, two, auto, one. 
And then that's another two autos into the two. Okay, let's have a quick look at this uptime. We've got a pretty standard 12 seconds duration for the skill two. Uh, one, two, three, four. Four actions every two. I think with some action speed, it's going to be fine. It's going to be fantastic uptime. And so, yeah, you can kind of tell why TS Aoi, the student Aoi, is so freaking cracked out from all of this physical defense now. Now, where she is actually going to be used is predominantly where your frontal units that do do fit defense down or they do do physical damage where they get cut. You're going to be using the TS Aoi because TS Aoi is going to be standing in the back. You could potentially use her in PvP. Like I'm seeing the poison debuff stuff. I'm seeing like poison and poison and poison. It just makes me think, what if you combine the two Aoi's? Wouldn't that be like giga damage? <laughs> but regardless, that is enough screen time for the TS Aoi. Let's move on and we're going to get a prize gacha for Arisa, Jita, Unfortunately, both of these units are going to be a pass considering we can actually farm both of them to five stars with their UEs, etc, etc. Uh, I did forget to talk about something for TS Aoi and that is whether you should pull for her or not. The real decider is how well did you come out of Summer at? So if you got freaking screwed by the Summer Saren, Summer Makoto, and if you freaking went in like ReZero and stuff, then you probably shouldn't be pulling for transfer student Aoi because she is a perma unit. However, if you did come out quite ahead, you can definitely consider pulling pulling for her, but just kind of make sure that you can pull some of the later characters as well, such as Halloween Kyoka, potentially Halloween Mimi, but then we got more limited hell coming out. We've got Christmas Christina, Christmas Ilya, who is a perma, but she is important for CB. And then comes the New Year's hell, New Year's Kiaru, New Year's Yui, New Year's Hiyori, if you don't have them, New Year's Hiyori with Yui is Gigamera, as well as the New Year's Kokoro. As for the Luna, I would highly, highly recommend picking her up as well, especially for the New Year's Kiaru comps. And immediately after the New Year's Kokoro, we have the Magical Girl Kasumi, who is going to be the bane of all of our existences in PvP. So my guys, we're kind of just like looking six months ahead in time. If you guys are not sure as to like which of these ones you should be pulling, go check out my year two pulling guide. It's got all of them listed out there. But yes, out of all of these future characters, Transfer Aoi is definitely one of the better ones. All right, gang, let's move on for realsies. So we've done the Arisa and the Jita. And we've got a new story event coming with the Saintly School. That's freaking sick. I do uh, like the Saint Teresa girls. And so the fantastic thing about this event is that it is going to be giving you A, Aoi shards, but then also B, the Ruka shards, uh, these ones right here. And Ruka, as we all know, is a pretty recently released unit. So therefore, I think that most people, whether you're newer players or older players, you're going to be benefiting quite a fair bit from this event. All right, and so as this event is running, we've got the 1.5 times player EXP. If you guys are coming in for the first time for Princess Connect, welcome, welcome. Uh, this is a fantastic game, but with that, let's keep going. We've got a new game update now. This is really, really interesting because I see the Area 27. And Area 27 marks the uh, the equipment update, generally speaking. And so my guys, unfortunately, I don't think they actually mentioned anything about the equipment update, but I'm relatively sure that this is what's going to happen. These pieces up here, which previously required five to create one, are now going to require three. Now, la di da di da, we've got 20 to 10 we got 20 to 15 but we also got some purple updates you can see this knife over here you can see these earrings over here they're going from 35 to 30 these purple ones 25 to 20 so you will notice that the most recent stuff they are not actually going to be getting the nice treatment it is what it is. However, this is still going to be a very, very welcome change. And so if there are some characters that you really don't have to build, I would hold off on building them until after this update, like if you're a TP powder, for example. And so my guys, on top of that, for Area 27, we are also getting the hard notes in which we'll be getting Lima, Shinobu, and Greya. It's fantastic. Oh my God, I freaking love this game. Freaking release a unit and then like three or four months after we can start farming them. That's freaking sick, dude. That's freaking sick. Otherwise, we've still got like the standard stuff. We've got the level cap going up 139 to 142. We've got the uh, maximum rank of 14.5. And all of this is going to be dropping on the 4th of August. Man, freaking hype. That's actually so freaking big. But you know what's even more hype? This. Because if you are a new player, there is going to be a special gala. I believe we are getting this six months early in comparison to JP. And so if you guys have not seen this before, you don't know what it is. This is the special gala in which when you begin the game, 
you have 72 hours to roll on this Gala banner in which it contains three of like the strongest units in the game essentially. And so this banner is going to be dropping on the 7th of August. I feel like that's a little bit late, but if you don't really have the time, if you kind of like, oh yeah, I'm finishing uh, uni at this point or something, I don't know. It's kind of weird scenarios, but you kind of get what I'm saying, right? Like these are all fantastic times to start. I think now is also a fantastic time to start. We've got free rolls going on. You can save up for the Nanaka or you could actually just wait until this banner. Actually, you know what? I probably would wait until this banner and then try reroll for all three of these. That's um, that's really freaking cracked. However, for us veterans, unfortunately, this is not going to give us any benefit. Like we'll probably never see it, <laughs> but anything to help get people into this game. I freaking love it. I love the special gala banner and oh my God, here we go. My guys, it is the six star ascensions. So we saw the release of the map 27. We've got like a couple of hard modes, etc., etc. We're going to get a new, very hard mode in which we're going to be getting these, uh, these shiny shards. And on top of that, where we do have the existing Sanctum survey for the unique equipment, we're going to be needing to farm these Princess Orbeez. And so these two are essentially the new materials that will be time gating us from getting the six star ascensions on our Gourmet Guild. So my guys, I'm actually not going to talk too much about this one because I've made a whole video on six star ascensions. I'll drop it in the description or something or you guys can go find it. And so of the three, if you had to choose, I would say that Kokoro six star is the most important one. She sees a a lot of use like everywhere. Don't get me wrong, the other two are fantastic as well. Pekoron suddenly does damage <laughs> and Kyaru 6 star does just even more damage. However, again, my guys, go check it out. Uh, it's pretty much a full walkthrough as to how you get to the six stars. Now, next we have the Ayumi unique equipment. Is Ayumi in the shop yet? I feel like I feel like she should be in the shop. But regardless, this is going to be a welcome update because I feel like we are pretty much at the end of the unique equipment sprint, right? Where every single update cycle will like, okay, here's another six UEs. Here's another six UEs. And I think it's going to slow down a lot now. So if you guys are like hard refreshing Sanctum Survey, etc., etc., I think it's okay. I think we're kind of good. And I just saw something that made my eyes go wide open. Master Coins earned 1.5 times. Oh, baby and we've also got the cap increasing during the period by an extra 4.5 i mean 1.5 times that's fantastic 4.5k and if you guys haven't caught on already these master coins are giga giga important because as we get more limited more and more of these shards are going to be available in the master coin shop and it's just going to cost like quite a fair bit to buy them all out obviously you shouldn't be buying like the summer suzume like i did but the muimi the summer tamaki like christina and all of that it's just going to get bigger and bigger and so i think we're kind of like at the event point of view where it's more like okay normal quest drops times two we've got grot times two we've got hard mode times two and we've got what temple track times two what yo crunchy roll man you guys are freaking based af freaking six star just came out and they're gonna hit us with the temple track times two man feels freaking good however you know what doesn't feel good the fact that this video is ending so <laughs> Time for the secret question. I want to know how many of the Kyaru shards, the Pekarin shards, and the Kokoro shards you guys have amassed over the years. Because those shards, those normal shards, are not going to be the limiting factor, but it's just fun to see. For example, I think I have like 200 of the Pekarin shards, another like 200 of the Kokoro shards, and maybe like a hundred of the Kyaru shards. And so my guys, let me know down in the comments below. And if you do end up leaving a comment, I would really appreciate that. So thank you guys so much. However, as Nanika once said, all good things must come to an end. So Thank you guys so much for watching. I'll catch you guys in the next video. Bye-bye.